So let's look at some other variants of queries that might occur in a database. So assume you have a workload that contains both a query that requests all attributes, select star, and at the same time the workload contains queries that only look at a specific column, a specific attribute, say city code. Well, then it's tough to make a decision. Here the row store would probably be the best option, here the column store would be the best option. So how do we support something like that? So there's another layout for that that's optimized for this kind of workload and that's called fractured mirrors. So how does that work? In fractured mirrors we linearize again the values in row order but then what we do is we revisit the values again in a different linearization order. So actually what we do is I depicted it with a different color here, actually it's the same curve. But what we do is once we went to 50,000 and here we linearized all values, now we continue linearizing the values again in a different order. And this time it's column layout, which means the curve has the values in row layout and column layout at the same time. Let's depict it a little differently. Basically, we linearize the employees relation twice, first in row order and then in column order again. If you wanted, you could linearize the values a third time, but as you might already observe, the, the drawback of this method is that all values are stored twice. So you double the storage requirements in this method. However, while processing queries, you can pick, you can say, okay, if I'm interested in most of the columns, and most of the attributes, like in our select star query, that is what the workload contains, select star, well, then you can look at this part of the linearization order. If you're interested in something like one attribute, let's say select whatever, city code, then maybe it's a better decision to look at this part of the linearization order and just traverse this segment of the curve to obtain all values. So that's a very nice property of fractured mirrors. You have the same data in different layouts and then during query processing, you can pick. The drawback of course is you store the data twice, which has storage costs, but also insert and update costs. Whenever you update anything, you have to update it in two places. So that's nice. Let's look at more queries that might occur. Assume a workload containing something like this, ID comma name in the select, and here's an average city code. So here you might wonder, I mean, this is not exactly row layout. So row layout is not the optimal because in these kind of queries, I'm not interested in the attribute city code. So why not use another variant of a layout and that's called column grouping or vertical partitioning. So what is column grouping? So in column grouping, we don't have a full row layout or full column layout, it's a mix. So here we have a row layout for the first two attributes, that is our row layout, but then the third column is linearized in column layout. That is what this here depicts. So first row, that, that part is row layout here, and then we continue with a column layout. And with that, we can support queries very well that either are just interested in those two attributes or are just interested in this attribute. So we can support both types of queries as depicted in this workload. Of course, this requires you to understand the workload in order to come up with a layout like that. So often you don't know the workload in advance and then you can't come up with a layout like that. You do it after the fact. So this means you start with one particular layout and then once you learn a bit about the queries that are fired against the database, you convert the layout into another layout. So more options. Assume another workload that contains select clauses with ID comma name and name comma average city code. So the only difference here is that it's not just an aggregation anymore, it's also a grouping plus aggregation. So we have here a grouping by name and within a group there's this aggregate. However, in any case, we, we need to look at those two attributes for query processing. 
for query processing, but also for returning those values later on. So how do we do that? The major difference to the column grouping scenario we just had above is that name occurs in both queries. So ID just occurs here, city code just occurs here, but name occurs in both queries. So here again, we could use redundancy. We could revisit this attribute, but we don't have to revisit this attribute and we don't have to revisit this attribute. So how does that look like? It looks like this. Again, to better show the effect, I depicted the employees relation twice. So what we do is we have one curve. I just depicted the two parts of the curve in different colors. So the first part of the curve just linearizes the first two attributes of all tuples in row layout. That is what we see here. That is row layout. Then we revisit the relation, but then we linearize the second and the third attribute again in row layout. So this means the values of this attribute, the name column, are linearized twice. We have redundancy for that. Only when we update, insert or delete anything with respect to the attribute name, we have to pay twice the costs. For everything else, all values are stored only once. Yeah, this ID column is stored only once and the city code column is only stored once. And if you do something like that, you can support queries very well that are either interested in the first two columns or in the second. So if you go back, that was our workload. So this will be supported by the red part of the linearization. This will be supported by the yellow part of the linearization. So this is called a column grouping with partial redundancy. And again, there are many things to consider here. You have to be careful not to introduce too much redundancy. Otherwise, insert and update performance will go down. On the other hand, the more those data layouts are fit for a specific workload, the better the read performance, the query performance. Well, the problem with those vertical partitions is that there are many of them. How many is defined by the so-called bell numbers. So the bell numbers are defined as follows. So B0 and B1 are set to 1. Then the following bell numbers are defined as Bn plus 1 is the sum of k equals 0 to n of n choose k times bk. And with that, you get a sequence like this. So n is the number of attributes in a relation. If you have one, there's one, obviously. If you have two, there's two. Why two? If you have two attributes, let's say a and b, well, you can either use the column layout or you can that's a column layout, or you can use a row layout. Those are the two options and so forth. For three, it's already five. For four, it's 15 and so forth. You can compute these numbers with a so-called bell triangle. So how does that work? You begin the first row with one. You write down a one. Then you begin the subsequent rows with the last number of the previous row. Well, the last number of the previous row is one. Then you fill the cells by adding previous cell in row to the cell above it. Okay, that is one plus one is two. Already end of the row, so we are back here. Begin subsequent rows with the last number of the previous row. That is two. Now this number is computed by adding those numbers. One plus two is three. This is computed by adding those numbers. That is five. That's the last number. Let's write it down here again. This number is computed by adding up those, that's seven. This number is computed by adding those. Then we got adding those as 15 and so forth. So write it down here, 15. Uh, this value is 15 plus five is 20. This value is 27. This value is 37. And that value is 52. That is the sequence, that is the five, five, if you have five attributes, you already have 52 different partitionings. So that's the value we just computed. And there are nice visualizations for that. So here's an example for just partitioning a five element set or in the database world, this means we have a relation with five attributes. So guess what the row layout is, guess what, what the column layout is. Row layout is this one, of course. This is row layout, row. 
And this is column because here you have five different sets. And then you can look at everything in between. So this is all the stuff where you have two attributes that are in one partition, everything else is a column layout. So here we have row layout inside the green subset always. This is subsets with three attribute values and so forth and so forth. So you have all the 52 combinations. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.